So I was eating lunch and I saw my friend Tara Brooke do the blush tag. I don't even know what this is called. It's just called the blush tag. I don't know where it came from, but Tara did it. So I fell in love with it. I was like, oh my God, this is so much fun. I love blush. I love hearing people talk about blush, showing different shades and textures. Then I saw she linked Ashley Rebecca's video. I watched that. And then I just went down a rabbit hole of blush tags. So I figured I would just film one myself. Why not? Uh, let's just jump in. First up is your year round fave. This is a new one to me, but it's gonna be unsurprising. It's the Hourglass at Night blush. I actually bought this blush because I thought it was gonna be more of that like berry shade. I'm gonna see if I can kind of like get in there. And yeah, I thought it was gonna be like that. This is, why would I show it like that? Like this beautiful kind of like brick berry color, but actually, when you swirl everything together, it ends up being much more of like a bronzy brown brick color with like a hint of red. There's not like a berryness to it at all. And on one hand, that was actually a great thing because now it's like my favorite easy to wear blush that kind of just looks like an amped up version of a bronzer. Um, but at the same time, I do just want to say that I was really hoping this blush would be for people with dark skin and I would just have like a light hand when I applied it. Hourglass just continually disappoints us in the inclusivity department and they keep launching products just for people with fair skin. So I can't like comfortably promote their brand right now, but I just can't help the fact that I'm obsessed with this blush and I'm really happy that I bought it. Uh, I never would have gone for this kind of like brown bronzy color. I mean, it's just not a me shade. I love pink shades. I love bright pops of red. Uh, I never really reach for neutral blushes, which is weird because they're like the easiest to wear. Um, but I have deeply fallen in love with this. It's just so easy to wear. It goes with every look. Um, the only thing I will say is that it is quite pigmented. Um, I only need like a boop and then a very gentle swirl. And even then it can be a little bit too much. So this shade's probably best for people who have like maybe slightly tan skin. Um, I will say in Ashley Rebecca's video, she showed this blush, 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 and the marbling on hers was very different. I have much more of that kind of red shade. She has a lot more of the kind of like light shimmery shade. So hers is very sheer. That's the one thing I don't like about the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Blushes is that the marbling of the blush really depends on which one you get. But all in all, this is my blush that goes with everything and I'm really, really excited. It's great. Blush that's worth the hype. Okay, that's an easy one. It's gonna be the Glossier Cloud Paint because I would say this is probably the most hyped blush of all time. Um, and it's one of my most worn blushes. I'll just swatch it on the back of my hand for you. I have the shade Puff which is a beautiful, light, milky, baby pink with like a hint of peach. I don't know why, but pink blush gets so much hate. Everyone always talks about in their videos, like I bought this pink blush and it looks so bad on me and it blows my mind because I think pink blush looks so good on everyone. It's just like such a brightening shade. This is the blush that I reach for uh, when I feel like I'm looking a little dull and I want something that just livens up my face. I love that this packaging is really small, although I don't like that it like squeezes out all the, um, the blush very easily, but it's tiny. Um, I love that you can just use your fingers and blend it out super easily. You can use a, you know, a brush, a sponge, whatever. Honestly, I do think they're worth the hype. They just launched two new shades today and, um, you know, they were geared towards people with deeper skin. So that's really good to see from Glossier. I'm glad that they're expanding the shade range. And I do think that you can probably find a color for everyone in that range. So worth the hype to me. Okay, a blush that's not worth the hype to me is pretty much gonna be the same thing as the most disappointing blush to me. It's like the same category. But the one that gets the most hype is probably the Tower 28 blushes. I have a review of them on my channel. It was one of the first videos I ever did. I was like super critical of it. And then that's like my most watched video ever. So now everyone probably thinks I'm a total bitch but I didn't like those blushes. And here's the thing, it has nothing to do with like Tower 28. It's the fact that I've realized recently a sticky balm texture does not work for me. I don't know what it is. The Tower 28 blushes, it's the same thing as the Fenty Beauty 
uh, cheeks out blushes. I don't know what they're called, but it was the same thing as the Fenty Beauty cream blushes. And it's the same thing as my Undone blush and my Wander Beauty uh, like duo thing. They all have this like um, sticky gel texture that when you apply it, here, I'll just try to show you with the Wander Beauty one. So you've got that like gel sort of like sticky, balmy texture, right? Well, when you go to blend this out on your cheeks, I'm going to see if I can get it to do it. See how like it's just kind of patchy when you blend it out. That happens with every single bomb texture for a blush that I've ever tried. Same thing with Fenty, same thing with Tower 28. I also find that that bomb texture, when you apply it on your cheek, kind of lifts up concealer or foundation. So you're left with like color here, but no coverage. So like freckles and imperfections showing through, but then my concealer is obviously very much coverage and it just makes my makeup look like not very seamless. So the lesson learned for me don't buy any more blushes that have a bomb texture. Blush with the best memory. Ooh, I know. This is the Ilia Color Haze Multi Matte Pigment in the shade Waking Up. This is their old packaging and I'm almost all the way finished with it. The reason it's my best memory is I filmed a get ready with me uh, in Joshua Tree when I turned 30 in February and this is the blush I wore I filmed it at this beautiful Airbnb in Joshua Tree. It was right before COVID hit. And uh, even though I was recovering from hip surgery, everything just felt good in the world um, and good in my life. And I was feeling really good about turning 30, which I was surprised by. So I just like this blush. It has a really good memory, but I might as well just tell you a little bit about the texture, not just about the memory. So this is what it looks like. Oh, I'm losing light. No, this is what it looks like. It's so easy to wear. So you've got this like beautiful, neutral, uh, kind of like dusty, nude, tan shade. It goes with almost everything. It's very similar to Hourglass at Night and Fit Glow Buff in the sense that it's just so easy to wear and goes with like every eye look and lip look. Um, I actually don't find that this is like super matte. It really just kind of like stays like a really nice uh, creamy shade. It does have a little bit of that matte sort of like soft slippery feeling to it, but it's just beautiful. It's kind of like the cream version of Hourglass at night and I just love it. It's definitely the best memory for me. I always think of Joshua Tree when I look at this blush because I had just purchased this blush then um, and it will always hold a dear place in my heart. My most disappointing blush is actually a blush that I really do love. It's the Han Cosmetics Lip and Cheek Tint. This is the shade Cherry Cosmos, um, but I'm really just talking about any Han Cosmetics blushes. This used to be my favorite blush formula. Um, I just loved, these are super pigmented, so they work on literally every skin tone. And I loved this beautiful kind of like bluish red shade. But uh, Han Cosmetics, like right around the murder of George Floyd and the Black Lives Matter protests, they had launched a tinted sunscreen and their shade range was abysmal. Um, I ended up going back and forth with the founder on Instagram in their public comments. And like, let me just tell you, she, this is why founders should not be communicating with, with, you know, consumers on social media. She just kept fighting with me and fighting with me about why they had to formulate this way, why they did it this way, why there are no dark shades. And all of her excuses were super pathetic. Like I came up with a rebuttal for every single one of them. And uh, then they blocked me on Instagram and I was being perfectly respectful. I have a highlight on my Instagram page showing receipts of everything that happened and you know what the founder said. And I was perfectly respectful. I never got overly critical, but like this is an important thing. Including people with darker skin in the conversation is important. And that just really disappointed me. This was one of my favorite blushes. The shade Coral Hibiscus was also an absolute favorite of mine. And when I see this now, I get angry. So Han Cosmetics sucks and I will no longer promote them on my channel. Ah, and I dropped it and that's fine. Next up, most affordable blush. Hmm. My two most affordable blushes are the CoverGirl Cream Blush in Flushed 
and then the Honest Beauty uh, cream blushes. The Honest Beauty ones are $12, and this is the shade Rose Pink. It's absolutely stunning. It's a beautiful formula. It just makes the skin look airbrushed, and it's so easy to use your fingers or a brush. I also have the shades uh, Peony Pink here, just a little bit of a brighter pink. So beautiful. It's like a pinky coral. And then one of my favorite YouTubers, Hannah Louise Poston, posted a video uh, with this CoverGirl Cream Blush in Flushed. And you guys know, like, I love a red blush. And it comes out in this liquidy formula. It's only $10. And it's like this bright coral, coral red. It has metallic pigments that give it that sheen. And I just find that it's absolutely stunning on the cheeks. It's super brightening. It just, like, makes me look very healthy. So this one's like $10.99, and the Honest Beauty ones are $12, I think, and they are just all absolutely beautiful and worth the money. Next up is my most expensive blush, and that would be, again, the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Blushes, but this time I also have the shade Sublime Flush, which I'm wearing on my cheeks today, and this is my first time really wearing it, but I've already talked about at night, so let's talk about this one. I'm just gonna show if you swirl it together, You've got this base pigment that's a peach and then you have lilac running through it. So it ends up looking just like this really natural pinky peach flush that I think is really, really beautiful. Now, the question is, you know, basically the price because it's my most expensive. And here's the thing. I know that $40 for a blush is crazy. Like it's objectively very expensive to me yes these are worth the money but that's just because of my own personal financial situation i'm in my 30s i have a full-time corporate job that supports my beauty habit and i don't these days make sort of like absent-minded purchases i really really think about the products that i want to buy i think about if it's something that i'll wear i read the reviews i wait for to see swatches um, so yeah, the at night and the sublime flush blush are really worth the money to me, but I don't think that they would be worth the money to all people. Um, you know, if hourglass came out with a mini size of these, which I know that they do offer for some shades, I would have way rather had those. I prefer small travel sizes of, you know, makeup items. Cause I just have a lot of makeup. I don't finish a lot of things but I really love these blushes. I get a ton of use out of them and now having to wear masks because of COVID, I'm reaching more for powder blushes over cream blushes. So these are my most expensive blushes, but to me, they were 100% worth it and I definitely don't regret them. Whew, we are losing light and it is 3.45 in the afternoon. This is crazy. Most colorful blush. Ooh, okay. First of all, this one is extremely colorful. It's very bright, poppy, but I already showed you that. So next up, I have this little sample of the Fit Glow Lumi Firm blush in Kindly. It's very bright and I'm obsessed with it. Check this out. Right? Right? Look at that. Like what? This is an exact color dupe of the Han Cosmetics Coral Hibiscus blush, which was my favorite beforehand. So obsessed with this that is very bright and colorful also um, another favorite of mine hopefully i get to talk about it later is the mac glow play blush and heat index this is my new bad bitch i love it it's got that like you know maybelline like dream air mousse texture or whatever and you can just swirl it together and you get that incredible shade it is like i want to describe it as a poppy coral yeah you can see i'm like really into like corally peachy reds um so this is the fit glow one and then this is mac glow play and heat index and it's honestly just stunning you can use your fingers like that but i just don't think it's really a cream blush when i swipe that on my hand like that it feels like a powder even though when you touch it it's like bouncy i think that's just because it's like a very emollient creamy powder like it's just to me it's not a cream it's not i don't care what you say the mac glow play blushes are powder blushes 
And that's one of the reasons I love them because if you take a powder brush and you swirl it in the glow play pan, and then you've kind of like brush it over your cheeks, that emollients that it has makes it seem kind of airbrushed. Like you can even see this is it all over my hand. Like I'm a fucking seven year old and it's just like, it's just like airbrushed and beautiful. And I just can't get enough of it. I need to get more shades, but I would say this is probably my most colorful one. So the next one is your most beginner friendly blush. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. When it comes to a cream, I'm probably gonna regret this, but it's the Honest Beauty Cream Blush because it's a cream blush that's not super dewy and emollient. This color in particular is also quite like nude and, and natural. And so I like to take a brush and swirl it in here. And then it just ever so slightly adds blush to the face. And I just feel like because this kind of has more of a drier cream texture, it's not gonna add as much to the brush as like, you know, a super liquidy product would. So that's why I think for cream blush, the Honest Beauty blush is great. I also think any kind of sheer powder blush would be the most beginner friendly. I'm gonna go ahead and say the MAC Glow Play blush, not in this color, but in the shades So Natural and Blush Please, because they have the same texture of this Glow Play blush, but they're like, very, very sheer shades. And so whether you want to use your fingers or a brush, I think anything that's beginner friendly is probably going to be more on the sheer, sh sheer side. For example, Hourglass Sublime Flush, super sheer, very beginner friendly. Um, oh, another one, Oleo e Oso. Their, um, their stick bombs are probably very beginner friendly because they're very sheer, super easy to apply. So really it's anything that's not super pigmented or super bright. Least practical blush. I know. Least practical, this is hard. I know. Okay, I don't have it with me. I think the least practical blush is NARS Orgasm or any blush with a ton of glitter in it. I just hate that shit. I don't like when my cheeks look super glittery Why do companies keep coming out with super glittery blush? Doesn't everybody hate that? I don't get it. NARS orgasm, anything with glitter, cut it out. We don't want you. Next, favorite blush combo. Don't have one because I don't layer blushes. Next, most underrated blush, easy. Bare Minerals Bounce and Blur. This shit is fire. This probably could have been in some of my other categories, but I wanted to save it for most underrated because it's so good. No one talks about it. It's similar to the Glow Play uh, blush in the fact that it's that like kind of, um, you can see like I can leave a dent in the pan. It's that moussey texture. Um, and this shade though is, is ideal for me. It's this stunning pink. It's actually quite similar to Sublime Flush, but it's just a little bit more amped up in color. I love, this was a point perk, but I will purchase a full size. I love that this came in this tiny little pan. It's so practical for me. I throw it in my makeup bag. I love that because of the moussey texture, it's still a powder, but that emollients makes it look airbrushed. Um, it means that not too much product goes on the brush. And so it is just like, One of my most worn blushes of all time and no one talks about it. This particular shade is Mauve Sunrise. Um, to be honest, the other shades don't really appeal to me, which is a bummer because I, I want this in like every color. I actually have a couple others I want to talk about because don't we all want to know what's underrated, what's not being talked about enough? This is the Air Perez Carrot Color Pot and it is just like dewy and beautiful. And uh, all of the other colors that they have in this range are quite bright, but this one is just understated. It's like a beautiful peachy nude on my skin. It's actually not too dewy, even though it looks like wet right now. Um, I just think that not enough people talk about that. And then I also have to give a shout out to Sarah Basso of Sarah Loves Makeup. Her blushes are insane. Let me show you a couple colors. Marianne is my most worn, which is very surprising. Um, she sent this one to me. I didn't purchase this one because I never would have gone for this shade. I tend to go for pinks for blush. 
but I tried this on my cheeks and I was like, what? First of all, look at this. It's like a mousse and you rub it in and then watch the beauteousness of this. Oh my goodness. It is like just that like perfect moussey, creamy texture. I'm going to build it up so you can really see the color, but it is like a gorgeous terracotta tan. There's a little bit of gold shimmer running through there, but you can't see it on your face and it just looks so good. Then, so that was Marianne. This is the shade Zadie, a gorgeous, gorgeous warm pink. This is probably, I don't know, maybe my most worn out of all of them, but you can see how well loved it is. It's that same thing, that same moussey emollient texture. You swipe it on your cheeks and it's like dewy and juicy and gorgeous. It's best for no makeup days because it is like, you know, they're quite dewy and emollient, so um, they don't last as long, but I am obsessed with them. They're incredible. I have one more shade to show you. Georgia, which is like Zadie and that's a pink, but it's a little bit lighter and a little bit more cool tone. So I'll just swipe it next to that. Yeah, pretty similar, but this one's more warm. This one's more cool. They're just amazing. She's constantly coming up with new shades and I love them. I can't get enough of these. So easy to apply with your fingers and then just swipe on. Love them. Those are all very underrated. Next up, worst blush ever. I don't know. I don't know what the worst blush is. Um, honestly, just like anything with a bunch of glitter in it isn't my fave, but I tend to do a lot of research before I buy products. So luckily haven't ever really, really, truly hated a blush, but the last one is favorite blush of all time. Before I do it, can you guess? Just a quick 10 second break here. Can you guess what it is? I'm sure you can. It's MAC Original Warm Soul. It is the best blush of all time. Nothing's ever come close. Nothing that's close to a dupe has ever been the same. It's the best blush of all time. Not the MAC Warm Soul that they sell online right now. The original shade. This blush right here that you're looking at is over 10 years old. I mean, you can see I've had this for 10 years and I still haven't hit pan because I just, I don't want it to go away. So that's what it looks like. And I should probably swatch it next to Hourglass at night. OG Warm Soul. I don't know if you can see, but it is very much like a terracotta tan. There is a little bit of rosiness to it. It's not too orange, um, but it's got this gold shift running through that just gives your cheeks the most amazing glow. It is eerily similar to Hourglass at night, and I'm gonna swatch them side by side. So that's MAC Warm Soul OG. Let's get in at night. They are pretty similar, but you can see the difference very clearly. Hourglass at night pulls much more peachy and a lot lighter, whereas MAC OG Warm Soul has that like rosiness coming through, which I very much prefer. You know, let's talk about it. So Samantha Ravindahl is coming out with a makeup line that's launching in January. And if that bitch doesn't come out with a MAC OG Warm Soul dupe, I riot. I feel like we should put some on. Let's just do it. Normally I would use a blush brush because this is the powder. Yeah, okay, you need you need a, a, a brush for this. That was dumb. But at least you can see the color. It's like, mm, mm, it's good. Thanks for watching. I would love for any of you who have YouTube channels to do your own version of this tag. I would love to watch them. I'm obsessed with watching these kinds of videos. So anyone who wants to do this video, I tag you and let me know if you filmed it because I want to watch it. Uh, hope you guys have a great day. Stay weird.